Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Brachis Daf Lamed Beis. We're right on top of Amar Aleph, says the Gemara, Amar Rab Chama Rab Chanina. Il Mali, Sholish Mikrois Halaluf, not for the following three psukim, the following three verses, Nismoite to Ragleim. Shall Sunni Israel, the feet of the Sunni Israel, this is a euphemism for Klai Israel themselves, our feet would totally falter at the time of Hashem's punishment. The Chsiv, what are the three Psukim Chad one Pasik the Chsiv, Asher Hari Yosi, Hashem says, Hashem acknowledges, I have caused the Ra, I have implanted the Yetzirah, the evil inclination within you. Says the Marsha, what kind of argument is this? How can we absolve ourselves from judgment? On account of the fact that the Yetzirah was implanted by Hashem, don't we know why did Hashem implant the Yetzirah? Why did He create the Yetzirah to begin with? It was merely to provide us with Bechir Chavshi, with free will to choose between Tov and Rab, good and evil. So what kind of excuse is this? You've created the Yetzirah. Says Marsha, it's not meant as an excuse to absolve us completely, but rather as a mitigating factor to lessen the severity of the Oynish. By saying, by acknowledging that the Yetzirah is a foreign entity, it was implanted within a Yid. We are proclaiming that the core essence of a Yid is goodness itself. He is a Chelek Elokai, he's part of Hashem, he's a Neshama of Hashem, and his Ritzayinenu, last is Ritzaynecha, our true will is indeed to do Ratzon Hashem through Torah Mitzvahs. The Yitzhar interferes, he deposits himself within us. So if a person transgresses and he sins, certainly Perhaps he needs to get an Oynish on account of that Avera. But the Oynish merely needs to come to clean him out, to purge this Yetzirah who is a foreign object, a foreign entity. He needs to extract him from within the goodness of the Yid. And what remains ultimately is the core essence of the Yid who is Toiv, and that lasts forever, that's everlasting, Layl Haba, in the world to come. So that is the Pshat Dvahashar Yoisi. Hashem is acknowledging that Tzahara was implanted. It's not your nature. It's not your true essence. And therefore that serves to lessen the severity of the Einish and ensures that our feet will not falter completely. Although we get a punishment, but it's also only something temporary. Ultimately we stand on our feet and we have everlasting existence. The next Pasuk is, V'chad, D'chsev hini chachoyim Just like clay is in the hands of the potter who forms it, so too, you are my hands, I can manipulate you, I can control your inclinations. And finally, one passage, Ultimately, Hashem will remove the stony heart, the unfeeling lave from within you. I'll exchange it for a, a heart of flesh that feels that sensitive to Kedusha and to closeness of Hashem. Rav Papa, we have another source that ultimately Hashem will remove the Yetzirah. It says, Ves, ruchi etin I will put my spirit into you. Vasisi, I will arrange that you should follow in my chukim and do my mitzvahs. So we have three psukim describing three different elements. Number one, originally Yetzirah was implanted by Hashem. As we go on, as we proceed, the Yetzirah still has control of the Yetzirah. And finally, Hashem will remove the Yetzirah from within us. Continues the Gemara. V'amar Rebbe Lezer. Moshe hitiach dvarim klapimala. Moshe Rabbeinu flung words upwards to Hashem. Shenemar, as it says, V'ayispal Moshe al Hashem. Moshe damat Hashem to annul the decree to protect Chal Yisrael from a tragedy. Al tikri el Hashem, towards Hashem with a Aleph. El al Hashem. Change the Aleph for an Ayin. Shekain, Dvei Rebbe Lezer and Yaakov, and the Yishim Lezer and Yaakov, they used to dash in that way. Kairin the Aleph and Ayin, they would exchange the Aleph for an Ayin, and the Ayin and Aleph, and they would exchange the Ayin for an Aleph, and they would make a drasha based on that. So here it's by Yispam Moshe, Al Hashem, he flung words, Al Hashem, An Hashem. Dvei Rebbe Yani, Yami Mihocha, we have a different source from Moshe Rabbeinu, Bi Matiach Dvarim, for debating, so to speak, Hashem, Vedizov. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Vedizov. What does it mean with these of Amid Rav Yanei Kach Amar Moshe Nagash Baruch Hu? This is what Moshe presented to Hashem. Rebbein Neshaloylam. Bishvil Kesa Vezov. Do you know why the Yidin did the Eagle? It is as a result of the Kesa Vezov, the 
the silver and the gold, that you lavished upon them, with such generosity, until they said, enough, we have enough. So you lavished, you gave them so much, an abundance of gold and silver. This, who this caused them to sin with the eagle, the eagle, the golden calf. We have a marshal, an analogy, a lion does not roar from a basket of straw, but rather from a basket of, of meat. He gets in this euphoric craze and he threatens and he attacks the animals around him as a result of him feeling haughty, as a result of having a good meal. Similarly here, Klai Yisrael, you gave them so much, you lavished gold and silver upon them and until they just had too much, die, enough, that brought them to the, to the situation where they sinned against you. Om Rabbi Yishu, another mashal, mashal Adam Shoshalei Perk Chusha, he had a a thin, a, a bony cow. So you gave it to eat food that is very desirable for the animal, kashinim, these beans. And then instead of being a khusha balasivarim, instead of being this thin and bony animal, she turned into this big, uh, uh, full grown, fully developed para through the good food that he, that he fed her, gained a lot of weight. And now she turned around and she kicked him. So he was quite amazed, perplexed. What caused you to, to start kicking me? It is only as a result of, of me having you fed such good food. Now you gained weight, you gained energy, and you turned around and you kicked me. Another mashal says, He bathed him, he anointed him with oil, he gave to eat and drink, he hung a, a pouch full of money around his neck, he sat him at the doorway of the, of the place where the zoynes, the immoral women are. What should his son do? that he shouldn't come to sin. You've placed him in this circumstance which leads inevitably to hate. On account of this is the following phrase that people use. A full belly, a full crazy belly, is a type of, of evil that causes one to sin. Shanemar Kimar Isam, when they pass Shava Yisbu Savoy, they become satiated by Yoral Libam, their hearts will become hori al Kenchin Chenchuni, they forgot me, they forgot Hashem. Ram Nachra Rami Hocha, Verom Lavocha, Vishach Hashem, you will become hori and forget Hashem. And Rabban Rami Mihocha, another passage which indicates the same type of thing, but Achal, the Savea, the Dosh, and he eats, he's full, and he gets fat in the Fana, and he will turn away to idol worship. And finally, we boy say Mihocha, another source, by Yishman Yishun Vayivad, Yishun will become fan and will rebel and will kick towards Hashem, will turn away from Hashem. So the point here is that Moshe Rabbeinu was being Malamat Schus and Khal Yisrael. He was sort of debating, making an argument to Hashem in defense of Khal Yisrael. Yeah, they sinned, but it was as a result of them being in a, a situation where, where sin is sometimes inevitable. Once you become full, satiated with wealth and eating and drinking, then that leads to one becoming haughty and ultimately doing an Avera. Says the Gemara, Omar Shwam Rachmeni, Omar B'Yanusan, Minayin. What do we find? Shechazar Kadish Baruchu, Vahoydul Lamoshe, indeed Hashem turned around and returned and was Moida to Moshe, acknowledged, he concurred with Moshe's argument that. We need to be malamatzchus and kolat sol shenemar vekesev hebeisi lahem. I've lavished, I've given them lots of silver, vazov and gold, vazov also the baal, and as a result, they did. They made the baal that we desire. Since I gave them kesev hebeisi la, therefore vazov also the baal. Therefore they did not we desire. So we see that lavishing one with an abundance of gold and silver indeed can lead to an avir. Continues the Gemara. This is during the Egel. Hashem tells Moshe, go, go down, descend. What does Hashem mean by saying Leich Reit? Says the Gemara, my Leich Reit. Amr Blaz, Amr Kadosh Baruch Hu Moshe. Moshe, Reit Medulascha, descend from your position. Kolum Nasati Chagdula. 
did I not give you this position of leadership? El Bishvil Yisrael was only on account of Kal Yisrael. However, now, V'achshav Yisrael Chatu, now that the Yidin have sinned, Atalamali, you are no more fit to be in this position. Your whole position is based on the level, the spiritual level of Kal Yisrael. Miyad, immediately, Tashash his energy became weak, abated. You have no energy to speak, to respond to Hashem in defense of Kal Yisrael. But as soon as he heard Hashem saying the following words, Leave me, let me, leave me alone, and I will go and destroy them. Omar Moshe, if so, Moshe Rabbeinu took the hint. That was a clue, that was an indication that I must first leave go, so to speak, of Hashem. And that would allow Hashem to destroy them. Apparently, I have some sort of say in the matter here. Omar Moshe, Dover, Zed, Toli, Bi. Apparently it depends on me. Miyad immediately Omad bin Ischazik b'tfilah He strengthened himself in tefillah b'kish rachmam and he begged mercy from Hashem. Mashal, this is an analogy of Mashal. The Melech to a king, a bus of Adam, a human king, Shagas al He was angry at his son. Vayamak heyo makak doyla. He was beating him a a makak doyla, a very big beating. Vayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
שעומד מוישה בתפיל השם, מוישה דאמן את השם בפני הקדוש ברוך הוא עד שהחלו, until he persisted and persisted, and השם ultimately relented and forgave כל הישראל. ורבא אמר, what is ויחל מוישה, עד שהאפר לא נדרוי, until he annulled השם's נדר. השם said he will destroy כל הישראל, and מוישה רבינו annulled, nullified that statement. That is the meaning of the word Vayichal. How? How is that indicative in Vayichal? Ksivach Vayichal. Here it says the word Vayichal. Ksiv Hasam. Elsewhere we find the word, the lush in the term Vayichal, in the context of annulling a vow. Ksiv Hasam Layachal Devari, one who makes a nether, a vow, cannot merely annul and can't transgress his words. And the Gemara Darshan of Omar Ma, we learned, who in a Mechal? One person himself. Can't go ahead and nullify his words. But others, if he stands in front of a bezdin, they have the power to be matanedh to annul one's nether. So that is the meaning of Vaychal Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu, who is a chacham, a chacham can be made for nether on his own, matanedh on his own. So he annulled Hashem's vow and he abolished the decree. Another pshat. Ushmuel Omar, Melamed, what does Vayichal teach us? It teaches us, Shemosar Atzman Lami Salema. Moshe Rabbeinu placed himself in the danger of death on account of Kali Yisrael. Kshenema, Vim Ayin, if you don't forgive them, Mechelin Ami Sifcha, erase him from Yisrael Torah. And that is the meaning of Vayichal, Lashan Cholol, a corpse. So Moshe Rabbeinu placed himself in personal danger, mortal danger, in order to protect Kali Yisrael. Omar Abba, Omar Yitzchak, another definition, Melamed, Shehechla Alei Midas Rachmem. He landed on them. He placed on them the Midas HaRachmim, the attribute of mercy, so that Hashem should display His Midas HaRachmim on Kala Yisro. V'Rabbonon Amri, Melamed, She'omar Moshe Nakash Baruch, Rebbein Shalom, Chum Halach, it's unsanctified, unholy, it is sacrilege for you, for you to do this type of thing and annihilate Kala Yisro. And that is the meaning of Vayichal Loshon Chulim. Continues more by Chal Moshe Tnei Hashem. Another pshat Tanya blessed Agod Lo Imer. Balame Shomad Moshe was filled with Hashem's Boch. Moshe Ben stood in prayer in front of Hashem. Atchah Zosoi Achilu until he got sick with the sickness of Achilu. My Achilu, what does this mean? I'm Rabbi Lezer. Eishlat Somais fire of the bones, some type of fever. My Eishlat Somais from Abaya Eshod the Garmi bony fire. So we have six different definitions for by Chal Moshe. Either it means that he was mafsir, he insisted until Hashem relented, or it means that he was matir the neder, he was mechal the neder, he abolished, he promised the vow of Hashem to annihilate Kal Yisrael, or by Yichalosh and Cholol, he placed himself in the mortal danger, or he was hechlumidas rachem, he made sure that the, the attribute of mercy would, would be attributed to Kal Yisrael, Hashem would deal with them with Rachmanis. Or it's a lashon of chulin. Hashem says beyond you to do do in this manner. And uh, finally, vayichal is a lashon of achilu, an illness, a fever. Moshe Rabbeinu expended such great effort in his prayer to protect Kal Yisrael. Continues the Gemara Zechariah. What did Moshe Rabbeinu say to Hashem? Remember, recall Avram, Yitzchak, Yisrael, Avadecha. Hashem is battling Bach. You've promised to them Bach. You've promised to them that. You will multiply them like the sand or like the stars. You promise them also that you give them a stroll. You promise them many things. Says the Gemara, my Bach, Omar Belezer, Omar Moshe Lagish Borchu. Rebbein Shalayla, il molein is battling a shrine barrets. If you merely promised them, your promise to them would have merely been dependent on heaven and earth. You've promised in the name of shrine barrets. Okay, I would say, just like heaven and earth are not limitless, they're not, they don't endure forever. So, so you similar, similarly, your shvul, your vow, can be battled, can be terminated. However, you meaning in your name, you swore using your name, and your name is eternal, everlasting. If so, your shvua, your promise can terminate. Ma'ashim ha'gadol chay v'kayom lo'olam, lo'olam elamim. Your name lasts forever. Kach shvuas ha'kayemes. Lo'olam u lo'olam elamim. So your shvua, referring to here, referring to the shvua during Akedas Yitzchak, where Hashem promises, binishbati inom Hashem, Hashem promises that He will be barbe the 
the children of Klai Yisrael, the offspring of Klai Yisrael, like the stars above and like the sand below. So this Shavuah must be eternal and can't terminate. Continues the Gemara, V'atadabar lem, you've told them, you've promised them, that Arba ezarachem kichoych v'ashamayim, you've promised them that you will multiply their offspring like the stars in heaven. V'chalo eretz hazoyit hasher marti, and this land, Eretz Yisrael, that you, that you have said, that I have said, that you will give them. Now the Gemara here is dwelling on the, the wording. Moshe Rabbein is referring to a Shavuah that Hashem says. Hashem swore that you've told them you'll give them, you'll be marbez aracham kech ha'ashamayim, and you'll give them Eretz Yisrael. So he should have said, Asher Amarta, that you've, you have promised to them, you've granted to them. So why does it say, Asher Amarti, I have promised. Says Gemara, Asher Marti, I have promised. Moshe Rabbeinu speaking about himself. Hi, Asher Marti. Asher Marta, me, buddy. They should have said Asher Marta. Referring to Hashem, you've told them, you've granted them, you've promised them. Omer Belezer, at kan divrei Talmud, mekan veilach divrei Rav. Until here, meaning until the words Asher Marti, this was the Talmud Moshe Rabbeinu speaking. However, the word Asher Marti, this was a response from the Rav from Hashem himself. Hashem is responding by saying, "Yes, you're right." Asher Marti, I acknowledge, I have promised them. He's concurring with Moshe Rabbeinu's request and he's acknowledging, he's agreeing to fulfill his promise. This entire Pasuk, even including the word Asher Marti, is Moshe Rabbeinu speaking. Ella, but rather, this is how you must interpret the Pasuk. You recall that during the Sneh, when you revealed to me in the you revealed yourself to me in the burning bush. You've told me, you've instructed me to go tell Kal Yisrael these things. To tell them, don't worry, you're in Mitzrayim now, but eventually I will take you out of Mitzrayim. I will bring you up to Eretz Yisrael. I'll grant you the promised land. So you remember, you told me to tell them that. And I, prom I fulfilled your order. I went as instructed and I told them about the future, how you will grant them Eretz Yisrael. So Rachel Ben here is referring to a past event. He's saying, Hashem, remember when you told me to tell them something in your name? You told me, instructed me, go tell Chal Yisrael, this is what I said to you. So what should I tell them now? How are you going to fulfill those words? Says the more inside. Omar, Martali. Those words that you instructed me, you told me. Leich emor lehem Yisrael b'shmi, go tell Klai Yisrael in my name and tell them that Shermarti, that I am telling you, I am promising you, Eretz Yisrael. I indeed halach to you, I told them b'shemcha in your name. Achshav and now, mani oimor lehem, how will I back that up? Please Hashem, fulfill your words, keep your promise to them. Continues the Gemara. Moshe Rabbeinu told Hashem, if you annihilate Klai Yisrael, the guy of the nation will say, me bilti yechelis Hashem, it is as a result of the inability of Hashem to bring them to Eretz Yisrael, that's why he destroyed them in the Midbar. Says the Gemara, Yochel Hashem Yibayleh. Why does it say Yechelis in a feminine sense with a self? It should have been Yochel Hashem. Says the Gemara, Omar Blazer, Omar Moish Nagesh Baruch, Rebbein Nishlel. Achshav. If you do this, Yoyim Ruumas Oilam, the nation of the world will say, Tosh Hashkoichi Keva. His power got weakened like a female. And that is the term Yechelis. They will attribute the weakness to you. And they will say, Hashem can't save us from the nations. Therefore, he, he chose not to bring us to Eretz Yisrael to begin with. He couldn't confront the nations in Eretz Yisrael. Hashem responds to this by saying, It can't be that they will have this impression about me. Didn't they already see the, the miracles, the strengths that I, that I have displayed already? I have displayed on the Yamsuf. Amal Fanov, so Moshe Ben responds and says, Rebbeinu Shleilam, Adai Yeshlam Leimar. Nevertheless, they can say there's a difference. Lamelech, Echad Yochalamoid, Hashem could have confronted, was able, had the ability to fight one king, Paroi. However, Lishleishim Echad Malachim, 31 kings that are present in Eretz Yisrael, and Yochalamoid, he can't confront. That's why he chose to avoid the battle. Where do we find that Hashem came back and concurred with Moshe's argument? That this will be a chil Hashem to the nations of the earth. Shanem abayim Hashem salachi kid varecha. I am concurring. I agree with your argument, with your words, and indeed, uh, this would cause a wrong impression amongst the nation of the earth. Tana de'er shmol kid varecha. What does kid varecha mean? You're right. According to your words, 
Meaning that this indeed will take place. They will indeed say this. If I don't bring, if I avoid bringing Kali Yisrael to Yisrael and avoid the confrontation with the kings, the Goyim will have this argument, will have this false impression of me as being a mere limited power. Ashrei, fortune is the Talmud, Shirabi Maidilai, who Hashem, his teacher, agrees and concurs with him. Uvulam Chayani, Hashem says, Vulam Chayani, my life, I am alive. Amar Rav, Amar Yitzchak, what is referring to? Malam Hashem, Malak Hashbach, Lamaisha, Moshe, Hachesani, Bidvarecha. You have given me life with your words. Rashi explains that you have set down the right impression in front of the nations of the world. Explain the Mepharshim. Why is this considered to be Chayim? Because the fact that Hashem's ability is unlimited, He has unlimited power, that is connected with the fact that He is everlasting. Hashem's existence is everlasting. Those two factors are interdependent. And therefore, once we establish that fact, the fact that Hashem's ability is unlimited, He is omnipowerful, that also is indicative of Hashem's Nitzchius, everlasting nature. And therefore, it's considered to be Hechi Yisani. You have demonstrated, you've indicated to everybody my everlasting existence. Continues Gemara, Darish Rabbi Simloi, Le'olam Yisadar Adam Shvacha Yishalak Baruch Hu. First one should set forth the praise of Hashem. Va'acha Kachispal, and afterwards ask for his personal needs. Minala, what do we find? This Mimoshe. Dechsiv is Chanan al Hashem Ba'isahi. I beseech Hashem, I pleaded from Hashem at that time. Uksiv, Hashem Alikim. You've begun to show your servant as God your greatness. Your strong hand. Who is like you in heaven and earth? Can do like your deeds and your strengths. And then after he praises Hashem, he requests. Afterwards it says, Ebrona, please let me cross and see Eretz Yisrael first. He praised and then he asked for his personal needs. Continues the Gemara, Eberna ve'eres, eres ha'toiva. Says the Gemara, Omar Beleza g'doyla tefillah. Prayer is more effective. More yoyisir masin toivim has a greater effect than good deeds. How do we know this? She'en l'cha g'doyla masin toivim yoyisir ma'isha beinu. There's no person with, no person greater with masin toivim than ma'isha beinu performed such great deeds. Afa b'kein, nevertheless, what do we find that his prayer was accepted? Ava became Leinen El Betfila. His request was only accepted through prayer. Shanem Al Tosif Daber Eli. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to enter his Yisrael. Hashem refused his request. Nevertheless, Hashem exceeded partially by allowing him. V'samachle La Leish Roish Apiska. Immediately afterwards, it says, "Go up to the, to the top of the mountain, to the summit, and you can view Eretz Yisrael from there." So Hashem partially acquiesced to his request. On account of what? On account of the tefillahs, as Hashem Himself says, Al Tisa Daverilai, don't continue davening. It is your tefillah that had this effect. Vomer Blazer, Gedoyla Tanis Yisur Natsdaker. When one fasts, that has a greater effect more than merely giving charity, giving tzedakah. My time and why? Zeb Gufay. Fasting involves a personal, a bodily sacrifice. Zeb Amamayne. However, tzedakah is as important as it is. But it is something which involves his possessions. A person writes a check, it's not his personal, it's not his gift that he's giving away as he does during a tainus. Mashal points out that although the Gemara early on the Vav says, Igra de Tanisa Tzitkasa, the main reward for a tainus, comes on account of the tzedakah that one gives during the tainus, the end of the tainus. Nevertheless, as Mashal, the Gemara there means to say that true, the, the reward is the, for the tainus. But it comes on account of the tzedakah. A person is rewarded for the tainus when he gives the tzedakah. That is the main schos of the tainus on account of the tzedakah. But, nevertheless, the actual tainus certainly is greater than the tzedakah itself. Continues the Gemara of Amar Blazer. G'doyla tefillah yoyishim ha'karbanis. Prayer tefillah is greater than all the various karbanis sacrifices. Shnema loma li'zev sifcheichem. Why do you offer me all your sacrifices? So Shem is rejecting, so to speak, the karbanis of Kali Yisrael. And what does it say? Uksiv of Arischem Kaveichem. So why does Hashem have to go ahead and say, when you spread your, your hands in front of me in prayer and tefillah, that too I reject. Once he rejects the karbanis, certainly the tefillah, evidently, tefillah is more, carries more weight 
then Karbanis. Therefore, Hashem needs to go ahead and follow up and say, not only Karbanis, also Tfila. I don't accept. A coin who killed somebody, he may not raise his hands with Nsiyas Kapayim, Shanemar Yadechem Domim, Maleo, your hands are full of blood, and you are not fit to do Nsiyas Kapayim. The gate of prayer got locked up. There's a mechitza, a partition. It doesn't allow our prayers to come up to heaven, to be accepted properly. Even when I cry, cry out and I, I yell, Sasam Tfilasi, my Tfila is held back. Says the more, even though we've just said, that Sasan Tfilasi, my tefillah is, is held back, is blocked by the closed gates. Nevertheless, Shari Dima, Loi Ninalu, gates of tears were not shut, were not locked. Shanemar, Shema Tfilasi Hashem, Hashem, please accept, listen to my, listen to my, to hear my tefillah. V'shavosi Azina, listen to my crying out, El Shemasi Al Techrash, to my tears, don't ignore, don't remain silent. Apparently, regarding Dima, a person doesn't need to request that Hashem listen, Hashem see, Hashem sees it, it's there. But don't, don't ignore it, Hashem. So apparently tears have a much greater effect than just prayer. Explain to the Farshim, what is the meaning of Shari Tfila Ninalu, Shari Dimois Loi Ninalu? It is the encasement around our heart that doesn't allow us to come out and express ourselves properly with an effective tefillah that carries great weight and is accepted properly. However, when a person digs deep down and resorts to a very deep level of tefillah that moves the, the, the person, the individual, to tears coming from a very deep source, that is the Sharit Mois, that tefillah has a great power, a great ability to be accepted and to have the right results. So even nowadays, if our tefillah doesn't carry such great weight, but if one davens with tears and really digs deep down, brings out his true emotions from the mamamaki from the depths of an neshama, to really, really seek Hashem, he will be zayche to accomplish great deals. Says the Rava like Gaza Tanisa Biyamidiva. Rava chose not to enact a day of a fast day on a day that was cloudy, which is indicative of some sort of Blockage, you've covered up with a, a cloud, not to allow the tefillah through. From the day of destruction, a partition, an iron a iron partition got erected between us and Hashem, our Father in heaven. Hashem is instructing the Navi to take a pan of the iron or sata isakir barzel, place it as a as a iron wall between you and the city. This is indicative of a of a mechitza that is biyumafsik between us and Hashem. Nevertheless, as the Mora says, with tears we can break through. One who lengthens, prolongs his tfila, ain't filasik chazeres reikam. His tefillah will not return void, empty, unfulfilled. We find this concept of Meshav Rabbeinu. Shanem Abay Spal Hashem. I daven to Hashem. Achsiv Hashem. Aishma Hashem. Elai Gam Bepamahi. Hashem listened to me also in that time. Apparently since he, he prolonged his tefillah, he invested much in his tefillah, he achieved results. Says the Gemara, is that so? Is a prolonged tefillah something that is preferable? One who prolongs his tefillah, that's not good. And he contemplates and, he's, and he focuses on it. He'll come to a, a, a pained heart. If one contemplates a lengthy contemplation, this will bring a, a illness of the heart. Explains Rashi, we're speaking about one who is marked with philosophy, who has lots of kavana, and he is mitzapesh at He expects, 
He anticipates that Hashem will fulfill his needs on account of him davening a long shman asrei, of having invested so much into his tefillah. That is a contradiction to the concept of tefillah. Tefillah means we're subservient to Hashem, we're invat ourselves to Hashem. We accept Hashem and his conduct and his way of dealing with us. That is the definition of tefillah. We need you Hashem, we're in your control. We don't understand, we don't always know. That is the point of davening to Hashem. It's meant to connect us to Hashem in that manner. To expect results is a direct contradiction to the concept of tefillah. This only achieves a pained heart. So we see that being marked tefillah is not something complimentary. Continues the Gemara, if one indeed wants to achieve results, Yasek B'Tayri, should immerse himself into a study, Shanara B'Yitz Chaim one connects himself to the tree of life, Tava, his desire will, will come, will materialize, and it's Chaim Ala Torah, it's referring to Torah, Shanara B'Yitz Chaim Ala Zikimba, Torah is a tree of life to ones that hold on to it. So, in conclusion, we see that lengthening a tefillah is not, a, is not something preferred. So how does this concur with the, with the, statement made of Khanan that it is good to be marach with tefillah and that achieves results. It's more like kashir, it's not a kashir, not difficult. There's a big difference between one who is hodah marach ma'ayin ba. He lengthens his tefillah and he is ma'ayin ba. He contemplates, he waits, he's anticipating results. That brings machla slave, cave lev. However, a person prolongs his tefillah, he immerses, he invests great, great effort into his kavana. he doesn't expect results, he doesn't anticipate results. In that case, it is a good thing. The person davens and didn't see results. What should he do? Don't give up. Daven again. Shanemar Kavi Al Hashem, hope to Hashem, Chazak, strengthen himself, Yamas Libecha, be brave, Vikavi Al Hashem, and Daven again. Hope again to Hashem, Daven and Daven and Daven. As we see by Mishra Benu, he Daven the Kiminyan Vishanon, the numerical value of the word Vishanon, many, many, many Tfilois. And as Moore said before, he was answered, at least partially. He achieved results, he never gave up. Perhaps the next Tfilo will break through the Mechitza, the partition and will reach the highest spheres and will be accepted by Hashem. There are four, four things that require chizik, constant encouragement, strengthening oneself to be able to be successful in these things. What are they? Number one, Torah, learning Torah. A person must constantly seek chizik, encouragement, and as Rashi says, she is chazik adam behen tamed bechol koychay. A person should seek to be mischazik to strengthen oneself and power oneself constantly bechol koychay with all his might. Regarding Torah, regarding mass and Torah and good deeds, regarding tefillah, a person needs constant inspiration to improve his tefillah to maintain a high level of tefillah. And finally, derech eretz, the ways of the land, for one's profession, for one's seeking of parnasa, that too requires chizik. That a person should go ahead and fulfill his tafkin in this world and uh, fulfill his job, seek his profession and livelihood in the proper way. Says more, Torah Masim Tevim Minayin. What is the source that Torah Masim Tevim require chizik? Shema rak chazak ve'emetz. Strengthen yourself, brave yourself. Ma'oid lishma ve'lasayis kachal Torah. Chazak is b'Torah. Ve'ametz ve'masim Tevim. Tefillah Minayin. What do we find this regarding davening Shema? The pasuk we just mentioned, Kavi Hashem, hope to Hashem through tefillah, Chazak v'yamitzli becha, strengthen yourself, v'kavi Hashem and hope to Hashem. Continue being mechazik yourself with tefillah. Every day one requires a new chizuk, as the farmers say. Musa reproof is crucial on a daily basis, even for just a very short amount of time. A person can't rely on yesterday's inspiration, just as a person doesn't rely on yesterday's meal. A person needs to constantly inspire himself, motivate himself to elevate himself in Torah, Mas and Tevim, and Tefillah, and finally Darach Eretz regarding his job, his profession, Menayin, Shnamar Chazak, Menes Chazak, Bad Amenu. It's referring to the profession, they were soldiers in the army, and they needed constant Chazak. Vatoy Metzin as Ivani Hashem, Vashem Shechechani, Hashem, you sent me into exile, you abandoned me, you've forgotten me. You've forsaken me, says the Gemara. Why this duplicate language? Why do we use Azuva? You've forsaken me and Shrucha, you've forgotten me. What is the meaning of this double terminology? Says the Gemara. 
Omar Rish Lakish. Omar Knesset is still of Nagash Bracha. Kaiswal turns to Hashem and says as follows Rabbi Nishalil, Adam Naisa Ishal Ishta Rishayna. Perhaps if a person goes ahead and marries a second wife, Naisa Ishal Ishta Rishayna. Nevertheless, he doesn't completely forget his first wife. Zoichem Asa Rishayna. He recalls his first wife. He still occupies a place in his mind. However, you Hashem, you've sent us into exile. You've made us subservient to the, to the nations of the world. It appears as they are your primary focus and interest. Atta, you Hashem, Aziz, Tani, you've forsaken us. Ushkach Tani, you've totally forgotten us. Is that so? Omelak No. You got the wrong impression. Totally, completely the wrong impression. BT, my daughter. You'd base mazolis berakia. I want to tell you something very interesting. I've created twelve mazolis constellations barasi berakia in the in this heavens. I'll call mazol a mazol barasi leshleishim chayil. For every constellation, every mazol, I've created thirty chayil. These are thirty generals, so to speak, of these stars. I'll call chayil a chayil, and for every general, barasi leshleishim ligyon. These are different terms of of. Uh, of uh, st- of stature of, of, of like a general, a, a major general, a sergeant, different types of descriptions of shultain and srara, of different types of, of uh, ones that are in charge of the kachavan. So we have every mazel has 30 chayel, every chayel 30 ligyoin. Each ligyoin says the Gemara, kaligyoin, ligyoin, brasle, shleishim, rahatoin, a different title of a, of a, Malach of a star, and every Rahatoin is in charge of. I call Rahatin Rahatin. I created Barash Leishleishim Kartoin, thirty of these Kartoin. I call Kartoin a Kartoin, and every one of these Kartoin I've created, I've designated, I've put them in control of Barash Leishleishim Gistera. I call Gistera Gistera, and any one of these Gisteras I have attached, I've attached, I've suspended to him, I've given to to his, I've entrusted in his care. For Kolgis to Regis to Talisa, you know how many stars? Shloish Meis Vacham Vishisham Vachamisha, 365 Alfei Reboi Kechavim. 365,000 times Reboi 10,000 of stars. This is we're talking about uh, quintillions of stars. Connected to Misachama, there's 365 is corresponds to the days of the, of the um, solar year. So look how many stars, look what's going on, the whole, the whole procession, the whole arrangement of all the Unlimited amount of stars in heaven. Why did I create this whole arrangement? Says Hashem, you should know. This was only created for you. You are the purpose of the Bria of the entire creation. How could you even suggest that Amris, as I've abandoned you, I've forgotten you? No. I keep you in the forefront of my mind, of my conscious. The whole world is revolving around you. Yes, I am in hiding. Gullah is the time of Hester. But you should know. You should be sure that you're the forefront of my interest. You are the tachlis, the purpose of the entire world. Continues the Gemara. Tishkach isha ula, Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, Kulm eshkach oilis elim. Do you think I can forget? The oilis, the karbona, the pitur, the chaman, the petur, chamar, the the bchiris that you have served for me, you shave craft al fun of a midbar that you have been makiv to me in the midbar. Amar al fun of ban shalal. If so, that you don't forget. Hoyil ben shichal to make it svedecha. There's no forgetfulness in front of your throne. So now I fear something else. Perhaps you also don't forget the bad things that I did. Shema loy sishkach limasa egel. So perhaps the egel is something that you also remember. That's not good. Omar Lakshbach responded, no. The Ela, Rashi says, is Ela Alech Yisrael, referring to the Egel, that I forgot. That was something I put aside. Omar Lakshbach Rabbani Shalom, if so, Hashem, Hoyle Shichal Venikis Vadecha, if there's forgetfulness in front of your Kisei Kavod, so perhaps you forgot the, the exalted moment of Har Sinai. We were so close together. Did you forget that too? Shema Tishkach Limas Sinai? Omar Lakshbach Hashem responds, no. Vanoi Chilesh Kachecha. Anoichi, which is Anoichi Hashem Lekecha, the, the, the moment of Harsina of Antara, that I do not forget. The ego, that's an Aver, that's a sin, that's not really you. The real you is the moment of connection. The marriage, the chup of Harsinai, that I will never forget. That's eternal. V'hainu d'orav lezer, omar v'yeshe. Ma'yitachsev gam ele shishkachna. What is the meaning of gam ele? I will forget ele, zemasa ego. Because during the ego it says, 
Ela lehecha Yisrael. So Hashem forgets that. Puts that aside. Vanoichi, however, lo yeshkochech ze masa Sinai, which is hinted in the word anoichi, anoichi, Hashem lekech. So in summary, tefillah is greater than mas and toivim, is greater than karbanis. We learned that shari dima, the gates of tears, lo yinina lo, never locked. A person is meant to prolong, to be marach in his tefillah, but not to be ma'ayim, but not to expect results. And finally, tefillah is one of those things that a tzrichim chizuk tamid require constant inspiration and motivation and encouragement to do it properly. Continues the Gemara Chasidim Rishonim, the early devout ones, Hayushoyin Sha'achas, they will prepare themselves Sha'achas before the tefillah to place themselves in the right frame of mind for davening. Menan Amili, where is this practice sourced? Says the Gemara Omer Shoban Levi Makra. Ashrei, fortune of those Yeshrei Be'esecha who sit in your home and prepare themselves for tefillah. Vamar Shoban Levi, Hamespalo, Tzorach Lishes, Sha'achas Achar Tefillah Say. He's meant to linger for a shachas even after his davening. He's meant to hold on to the tefillah experience. Don't leave right away. Sit there and linger for a while. Shenemar ach tzadiki yoidu lishmecha. After the tzadikim, thank you. Yeshu yishar mispanecha. They sit in your presence. They linger even after the tefillah. Tani nami hachi. We learned a brisa. Hamaspalo tzorach shayisha. Shachas koidem tefillah soi. V'shachas achar tefillah soi. Koidem tefillah soi minayin. How do we know that this is required prior to Tfilah Shanemar Asher Yeshu Beisecha? La Achat Tfilah Sminayin after Tfilah. How do we know the Chsiv Ach Sadiki Yehudu Shmecha Yeshu Yisharim as Panecha? Tana Rabban Chasidim Ari Shoyim. They had a very interesting schedule. Ha Yisharim Shah Achas and Mespalim Shah Achas. They would wait for an hour, daven for an hour, and then Bechayzer Mishayim Shah Achas, and then after davening they would linger for another hour. Says the Gemara, "Bechima Achar she shoyin teisha shoyis beyoyim betfila." If they spent nine hours of the day involved in tefila activity, if so, Torah and Hechem Shtameres. How did they have enough time to review the Torah and to retain it and to have it absorbed within them? They had time to learn, but much more time is required to to review the Torah to absorb it. How was their Torah absorbed? Umalachta and Echnasis. How did they have enough time to involve themselves in, in profession and early, earn, earning a, a livelihood? They parnasa. Ella rather says the Gemara Metoyich Shechasidim Hayu. Since they were on such a high level, they merited a special siyata de Shmaya, heavenly assistance. That Torah and Mishta Meres, the Torah was retained without their review efforts. Umalachta Mesparechas. And the little effort they did for livelihood, for Parnassah, was blessed and they had whatever they needed. So in conclusion, one is meant to be Shoya before Tefillah, we learned that from Asher Yeshri Besecha. And following Tefillah, we learned that from Yeshri Yishar Mespanecha. Continues the Gemara, Afilu HaMelech Shel B'Shleim Lo In the middle of davening, one doesn't even return a greeting to a king. Amar Yisif, Lo Yishonu, this is only said, Elo L'Malchi Yisrael, regarding a Jewish king, since this doesn't place him in danger. A non-Jewish king, one may not place himself in danger and he must be paisek to interrupt and respond to his greeting. Meisve, we learned in the Brisa, HaMespal, one who is mild davening, Vro Anas Bakkenegdi, sees a robber approaching him, or Ro Khorin Bakkenegdi, sees a wagon barreling towards him, Loye Mafsa, don't interrupt, Ella Mekatsa Vayla, merely be Mekatsa, abridge the rest of the Shemana Esrei Vayla and complete davening. So, we see one is not meant to interrupt, but rather to be makatzer. The Farshim say, what does makatzer mean? To say the beginning and the conclusion of the bracha and leave out the middle. So this is a contradiction between the b'raisa and the halacha, which said that one is meant to be paisik in the middle of Shemana Esri. It says, the more lakasha, this is not difficult. Ha, the efshel lakatzer, the b'raisa is speaking about one is, is, he's able to be makatzer, he's already towards the end of Shemana Esri, and he can abridge it and conclude it. However, if he is smack in the middle of Shemana Esri, in that case, He's meant to interrupt the Paisik so not to place himself in danger in Sakana.